he has a lot of power that people kind of underestimated. Um, most people are on the bandwagon now because they saw him go after Canada in, in a vicious way j during the first game. But, you know, watching him play and coaching teams that he played with and stuff, I always know that he, the potential was there. And sooner or later, he would get his opportunity. And if the top order gets a start, I think that um, the team could do some damage because most of the heavy lifting has been done by Corey and Hermit so far. You know, um, before the, the, this first game when Aaron joined the party. But if Steven and Gauss really get going at the top, I think U.S. can make big scores. I want to say good afternoon to all the cricket fans around the world. You know, it's ICC T20 World Cup that's in the air. It's been played in the West Indies along with the USA. History has been made as the US have now made it into the T20 World Cup. And this afternoon, we're going to bring on no other than Sir Clayton Lambert, a man who have played for the West Indies, also played for the USA. Who better to bring on here to talk about U.S. cricket and also could give us a little update on West Indies. Good afternoon, Sir Clayton. Welcome to Biff TV, Cricket TV. Good afternoon to you too. All right. We're going to quickly jump into even our first game against Canada. This have basically showcased U.S. at their best. Not to take away from Canada, an excellent game. They played well, and I think they thought they would have had this one. Could you just tell us a little about this opener and what that does for U.S. cricket on a whole? Well, I thought that Canada um, made a very good score. And when you look at the way they started bowling in the power play, it was very, very challenging for the USA. But however... There's a certain player that I, I really like um, in the U.S. team. A lot of people think he's more of a one-day 50-over guy. But I see him as somebody who is prepared to bat through the innings and try to bring the game home at all times. And he has a lot of power that people kind of underestimated. Um, most people are on the bandwagon now because they saw him go after Canada in, in a vicious way j during the first game. But, you know, watching him play and coaching teams that he played with and stuff, I always know that he, the potential was there. And sooner or later, he would get his opportunity. He was unfortunate during the, the Major League that, you know, the same stigma was placed on him. But I'm sure now he's going to get a lot of major league play and i'm talking about aaron jones definitely it's a player that i've mentioned earlier that's going to be one of those players can change a game and he did prove that in this game against canada so uh mr clayton lambert you would have had even more in-depth relationship with such a player aaron jones been given the fact that you've been around the u.s cricket for a while you know you've been among the selection panel could you just tell us a little about Aaron Jones off the field? Now we're seeing on the field, but could you tell us about his discipline so far off the field as a player? Um, he's a hard worker, very quiet spoken and very respectful to everyone. Um, you know, he even comes up and he always calls me legend. I know I'm not one of the West Indian legends, but... He always referred to me as legend because um, I was someone that he looked up to um, in his younger days. And wherever I can offer advice, I would always um, do my bit to help him to improve his game. Thank you for, 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 for that and thank you for the, all the work that you have been doing with the U.S. And I'm just going to put you under pressure a little. In this T20 um, World Cup cricket, could you just give us some of the names that we need to look out for in terms of could be a game changer in this tournament? Like I said, U.S. has a, a very 
strong team. Th those guys are performers. Um, my, my biggest disappointment is, is Stephen because he's the, he's the richest talent in the team. And, you know, just a little bit of inconsistency. But again, if you see him get in and, and you see him go in, you would realize how destructive a player he is. Um, Gauss is also a very good player. And if the top order gets a start, I think that um, the team could do some damage because most of the heavy lifting has been done by Corey and Hermit so far. You know, um, before the, the, this first game when Aaron joined the party. But if Steven and Ghost really get going at the top, I think U.S. can make big scores. All right. We got also, also look. Okay, continue. No, in, in the bowling department, um, I before I saw the, the nature of the pitch, I, I wanted an extra spinner. But um, when I saw the nature of the pitch in the first game, I realized that the selection was perfect. And Jesse Singh, he might go under the radar, but he was very, very impressive when he bowled. And if the ball starts swinging, then Ali Khan and Saurav will be dangerous in the power play. Definitely. I want to now look at our captain, Monarch Patel. What type of player is this um, player? What would you tell the U.S.? are the spectators, the followers to look out for in terms of this player, Monarch Patel? I think he is a gifted batsman. However, he hasn't done a lot when it's the really big games. So it's up to him to be able to relax, understand that, you know, it's ball versus bat and try and establish himself and... and you know, really understand that he's here and if he's here, then he's competing against these guys. Definitely. So I'm really going to take it back now. So Florida, this is where I'm bringing you this broadcast from. I've been taking it to the street and guys, I'm asking pardon for the trucks and the vans that you may hear, but this is real cricket. I've been talking to fans you know, inside a barbershop, along the street, in the store, in the, the restaurants. And guess what? They're all shouting and cheering USA. And, you know, this is really amazing for us down here. I'm down here in South Florida, the Sunshine State. And Stephen would have been a homegrown cricketer. He would have born in you know, of Jamaican parentage. However, he grew up playing cricket right here in South Florida. And we really look up to Stephen on this side of the fence, you know. And with him, you have described him as a player that could change the game. And I want to just say, I, I, I am on that with you in terms of Steven Taylor. But as you said, a little inconsistency here and there. If you had a message for Steven Taylor, what would that message be? I think he, he has to um, relax and be more selective. You know, um, he's the type of player that goes all the time. But we need him to be more selective and, and try to back 10 overs. Because if he bats 10 overs, he, he would have 78 to go in. So the, the object as an opener is to get yourself in. Right? And he hasn't done that, you know, often enough. You have to bat and get yourself in and then you become destructive. I mean, I was the coach for U.S. when Stephen made his first tour with the USA at the age of 14. And I was amazed that our quickest bowler, which was Ian Allen at the time, he was kind of rushing some of the batsmen. But Stephen was really comfortable batting him. And, you know, right away he gained my respect. And he subsequently made a lot of tours. Basically all of the tours that I, whilst I was coach, he was there. Okay, now this led me to ask you another question. How difficult is it to coach such a team? We know it's so diverse in terms of the players. We have players from Asia, you know, players from the Caribbean, players from right here. Steven is a homegrown cricketer, you know, but you have to deal with players from all over Pakistan, India, 
you know, Jamaica, Trinidad. How difficult of a job is that for a coach when you have to deal with so many nations in one country? Well, the thing is, everyone is there to play cricket. And when I coached, those guys were friends. They wanted to see each other perform, right? We we visited each other. We had dinners together. We we were a team of friends, and it was easy with the blending. Okay, so you're telling me once you have a team that blends together, that simply make it much easier of a job for the coach. No, well, cricket is a team. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, cricket is a team sport, right? And I find if you play as a team, you get better results. De definitely, most definitely, and and and, and that's something that's been instilled in us from a youth. Especially you grew up in the Caribbean, playing for the West Indies. You know, you have played against some of the the biggest names in cricket. You have, could have played along with some of the biggest names in cricket, and. Definitely, you would have bring a lot of experience to this current U.S. team. As you said, you have worked with Steven Taylor from the beginning, and he's still here in this current lineup. So that tells us that that's a, there's a lot of knowledge with this team, guys. The, the mindset is going to be still. They're going to be definitely players with a cool head, which we have seen demonstrated in the first game. So my next question to you, Mr. Lambert, is the U.S. Yes, we have the first win, but not many people are looking for U.S. to make it out of Group A with giants such as Pakistan and India. How do we see the U.S. making out of this zone? By winning two more games. And who are we going to beat? Anybody that we play in, if they come to play against us, that means we are as good as them. Well, that it's going to be a, a big, big thing if they win either Pakistan or India, which they have to be one of these teams if they're going to make it through. I just feel like, you know, more likely they're going to be targeting Pakistan, but it is cricket and India is basically playing their best game. So we know they're going to come and they're going to put on a real good show. But for me, I think the US, they're wearing that US logo right across the chest. And I spoke with um, Alec Yan. He's like, it's, 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 it's their epaulet. They, they, they're, they're living this and they, they have a statement to make given the fact that, you know, a lot of people, I don't like use the word, but they look at them at the underdog. It's like, you know, they didn't belong here. But I'm saying they have already made that statement in that first game against um, Canada because I think Canada with that score, I believe that they were seated pretty well. And the U.S., you know, Aaron Jones, I, I don't know what to say about this young man, but he was savage on the night. And he have actually have a lot of people cheering now. There's a lot of hooray, you know, because people are looking to see this type of level of cricket being displayed, you know, and he showed professionalism. The team showed that they're capable of doing it. And really and truly, it's down to game by game. So just give us your final thoughts and what you think is going to happen in this World Cup here, you know, the teams that you think are going to make it through to the round of eight, which we know they will be coming right down here in Fort Lauderdale. It's going to be a, a big weekend, that weekend in Fort Lauderdale. But if you want to give us just a little snap, you know, you don't have to be direct, but who do you see making it through to the round, the next round? Well, I'm, I'm not going to try to do that. I've become more of a spectator, and I, I appreciate good cricket when it's played. I think that... Um, the biggest friend for the USA team is that a lot of the wickets are not going to be placid wickets to play cricket on, right? Because US has a, a challenge with the, the soil that we use. And um, so the wickets are not going to be, you know, to the level that most of the international players um, play on. And we have the home advantage. So I'm hoping that we can use that advantage and actually, you know, make some strides. Definitely, in any level of cricket, home advantage is going to be good. Not that you just get used to the wicket, you're playing on them probably several times, but also the fact that you're getting energy from the crowd. You're, you're going to have that home support. Um, how big is that support of this U.S. team? 
I think it's it's very split. Um, um, you have U.S. will draw some some support. I think there's a strong Bangladesh community, and those um, that community will will um, cheer for Bangladesh first, and then U.S. second. And also, there's a really massive Indian community. And you'll have the same thing where they chill for India first and U.S. second. So once U.S. is playing and it's not against India, yes, they'll get a lot of support. If they're playing, it's not against Bangladesh. They'll get a lot of support. And if they're playing not against West Indies, they'll probably get a lot of support. Okay, um, Sir Lambert, before you go, what I want to do, I want to take you now into the dressing room and the dressing room of the USA. The dressing room on the day that they're going to be playing India. You are the coach. What would you say to your team? Well, I don't think it's on the day. I think um, preparation starts long before the match. It, on the day, it's just about execution, right? So, you know, you just remind them that this is what they've been working towards and, you know, try to go and execute. And do you think that would be enough? for them given that it is india don't you think that they're gonna be having you know some form of fear just knowing that this is real giant we're going up against how is their mindset do you think you know going in for this one um i cannot get into their minds i just know that um my second first class game i turned up and andy roberts was opening bowling and to me, Andy Roberts was a legend. But I knew my job was to compete against Andy Roberts, you know, and I got a, a century. So it's just them understanding on cricket is bat versus ball. Nothing to do with names. You know, oh. the names might mean that the guy is more skillful, but that's it. At the end of the day, it's bat versus ball. Okay, I, I'm glad that I'm able to talk to you, um, Sir Lambert. And this has to do with the T20 versus the longer version, the one day now, because now, first time, the one day was the, the, the short version. But now we see 320. But I know some of the past cricketers, they really don't like this format of the game in that they think it takes away the class and the discipline, you know, of going out there, playing yourself in the stroke play and so forth. But with the, the T20, it's a different ball game. How do you feel about the T20 in terms of cricket and its development? Sometimes you, when you have a product and you can let that pro product grow old, you have to spice it up. And I don't have a problem with, with T20. Um, I have a problem sometimes with the amount that's played, right? But I don't have a problem with T20 because I think that's what's going to help to sell the cricket and pay the players. And because of that, we, um, I mean, we moved from white clothes in, in, in one day internationals to colored clothes. So everything is going to keep, um, you know, moving on and everybody's going to try to make it better. And if T20 didn't sell, they would not have, um, there would not have been so much of it. All right, back on that, that you brought up the fact about money and what's going to sell the cricket. So now this leads to another question. And this is a question where we see a lot of players, talented players, for example, the West Indies, players that we'd love to see on this World Cup. But because of the money, you know, these players going into play IPL, CPL, and they've been paid a lot more money than they've been paid within the West Indies. We have seen we have players who definitely would be a force to reckon with. But because of that money, and because of this format of the game, we realize they're not represented and they're not representing their country. How do you view this? You see, at the end of the day, a, a professional cricketer has a shorter work in life than most people that do a, a seven to four job. And they, the cricketer has to know what is required for him at the end of the day. He can get a significant injury and his main employment, you know, is done. So it's everyone to, it's up to everyone to make that choice, 
right? And you cannot tell someone how to live the life. All right, very, very, very sharp and, and, and precise answer right there. And you know, it, it's really a battle because I've seen it where you making that decision may also hurt your cricket because uh, we have seen several players over the years who have decided not to represent the West Indies at a particular time. Not that they won't represent them for the World Cup or something else, but it's just during a season they're probably tied into a contract with an IPL, a CPL team. And they said, you know, I'd rather opt out of this particular um, series. But then they're like put on a, a, a watch list in that they may not find themselves back in the team. And this also hurt the cricket, hurts the player, hurts the fans. Uh, I really would like to have a little take on this part. Yeah, but West Indies is not without sin because there are players that should make teams that don't. And we don't know when, you know, you look around, all of us can look at the team that's selected for West Indies and we can say, man, oh, mayor should be in there or somebody should be in there, right? But they're not. So when these players realize, you know, we, we're not getting selected sometimes, They've got to make a decision where they, they have to look after themselves. You you definitely hit the nail on the, on the head there. That, that, that's a big reference that you have made. Because as you said, a cricket, their, their, their career could be shortcut. The fact that they are prone to injury. And every day that's what they do. you got to look at the fact that they have a family to feed. And that family is depending upon them. And as you say, they may be a very good cricketer, but yet still being overlooked by the West Indies. And, uh, and if there's an opportunity that comes up, if you ask me, I'll say jump at it. But that's still Africa cricket. So, you know, I think we're like somewhere out there in the, in the, in the deep sea and everybody just got to find their, their their way home to shore, you know, and be safe. So I mean, I mean, to the fans, cricket is a game, right? To these players, cricket is a workplace, right? They're going to the workplace to earn money and they have to put in a lot of time. And you could only have X amount of players playing. And if somebody see a way where they can make their money, they, they got to take it. You know, I once talked to Lawrence Rowe, and you know, not that I want to bring this one up, but I remember with him going to um, South Africa. I think that also, it, it's a similar situation that we're going to be faced going forward. In that players will have to make a decision, and it's not going to be the decision that we as a spectator, even the West Indies selection panel, you know, that's, they're going to like, but some players will have to make that dis decision because it's their life and it will affect them for the rest of their life if they don't make the right decision at the right time. Because trust me, your talent's not going to last forever. You know, as you say, it could be very short-lived. And I think this is going to be one challenge that will be faced, especially in the West Indies. And it's the fact that you're not getting paid if you're just on a reserve team sitting somewhere in Trinidad or Jamaica, really. That money is not going to help you if you even get on the pay payroll. And for them, going one game, two game, IPL, CPL, one season, and they could be set for life. So for me, I'll say, guess what, guys? You just have to make the decision. You got to think about it. Think about all aspect of it. And you make the best decision. As spectators, as Sir Lambert would have said, for them, it is it is work. You know, we have a workplace. Are you able to just jump out of that workplace? You have to take a lot of things in consideration. That is where what's paying you, you know? So it's going to be a challenge. And I'm thankful that you're able to give us your point of view on this, um, Sir Lambert. I know it will be well taken, especially by, you know, our fellow West Indian cricketers. You know, I don't think it's that much of a big deal in the U.S. Because uh, U.S. is a team, everybody want to wear the U.S. colors. It's like people from all over the world, they're, they're just looking to get into the USA. So, you know, it may be a little challenging. But could you tell me if, the, if that problem do exist here? I mean, the U.S. cricketers are now well paid, right? And I mean, a lot of the cricket that's played in the U.S. is where people are paying to play. And until people are being paid to play, then probably it won't expand to the level that um, me and you wanted to go to. So basically, our favorite teams are still faced with problems. They're faced with a lot of decisions that they individually have to make. And how well we develop our cricket will be dependent on how well the organization, you know,
command board in terms of supporting these players you know, on and off the field and working out an amicable or fair compensation package so that these players want to stay either within the West Indies or even the USA team. Yeah, normally when a World Cup comes to the US, it creates a lot of development. Um, it did with soccer and hopefully it will do so with cricket. And we just have to wait and see. Um, I'm sure that, you know, if the players are compensated better, they will, they will, um, improve and, and rise to greater heights. And they will understand that, hey, this is my payday. And when I go out there, I need to perform consistently. I've seen an article and it's making mention of one of the stadiums that have been built. You know, we realize that U.S. have the infrastructure, they have the equipment. U.S. could put up uh, a cricket stadium in as short a time as anyone else around the world. They have that development in terms of their infrastructure, the engineering, whatever it takes. And we see that. So I think if they're really willing to come on board with cricket, USA going to be a force to reckon with, you know, in that we, we know we were lacking in grounds, but here we go. The, Olymp the Olympics is coming up in 2028. If US shows up well here in this T20 World Cup, I think it will definitely set the stage in for the bigger eyes to start looking in at this sport to see that it's going to be a sport that a lot more investment could be put into. But, you know, I also understand that they may be even be removing or taking down the stadium after the, 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 the season. You know, have you have any word on this or how do you view this going forward? Well, the stadium is supposed to be temporary, right? Um, you know, an infrastructure like that probably got to be voted in by the city and what have you. And this might just be, you know, where they come to an agreement that, hey, we're going to have this here for a few days or whatever. You know, but the thing is, cities, they do stuff to make money, right? Lauder Hill built that stadium because they were promised that there can be a lot of international cricket and they're going to make a lot of money. It's going to bring like people into the community and they're going to be spending. The businesses are going to profit. You know, they, they haven't you know, really seen as much of the games as um, they probably would have liked, but they stuck with it. They kept improving the field. And, you know, now moving forward, there's a very good chance that um, they're, they're going to see more cricket. And, you know, because of the stadium, a lot more money will be made in, in the city. Sir Lambert, could you tell me the feeling just to know that the USA is now being part of T20 World Cup right here on home soil. Once I retired from West Indies cricket, I it was always my dream to help to promote cricket in the U.S. And the fact that um, U.S. have gotten to this stage makes me feel really, really good. So, Lambert, just to take the um, fans a little back, could you tell them the years that you played for the the West Indies, and actually, so we know when you started to work with the United States of America Cricket Foundation. Well, actually, I retired from West Indies Cricket in 1999. And right after I retired, I moved to the U.S. And four years later, 2004, I represented U.S. Um, and we actually qualified to play in the ICC Champions Trophy. That was a force for a lot of us. And now, um, they, at that time, cricket was like a weekend sport for most people. But now, the players are much more professional in how they're going about it. And because of that, U.S. have risen to where we now um, represent in the USA at, in the T20 World Cup. And hopefully, next year, we will be able to mount a challenge to represent us in the one day international all right so just to take it back what would you associate the growth of cricket here in the usa to? i know it wasn't the favorite sports you know it's not that base american sports but what have led to such a growth 
that the USA is now one of the team to reckon with in this ICC T20 World Cup? Well, most things to do with sports is about exposure. And there are several really high-level T20 tournaments that's held um, in the U.S. And the players are getting exposed to a lot of international talent that's coming in. Recently, we have the minor leagues and, and now the major leagues. So all of that is contributing to the interest and a bit of money for the players so that they can focus more on the sport and not um, do it on a part-time basis. So from what I get there is that the exposure. So now the U.S. is now being exposed to cricket and that's simply because men like you would have taken your, your cricket career from the West Indies, you know, already being a developed player, come here in the U.S. and play along with the U.S. Um, cricketers have also led to the development of this. Because I could go back, I, I speak with one Mark Johnson, which you would have known, is also a part of that U.S. lineup that you would have talked about. Also went on to coach the U.S. team and you guys would have played in the same era. And he was telling me the, basically the same thing. But just tell us how difficult was it as a cricketer back then to really make the necessary adjustment you know, with this busy lifestyle in America. We know America is all about the work, 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 work. How what difficult was it for you guys then to get to at least a cricket field? And I know there was even a problem to find a proper cricket field to play on. Could you just tell us about those challenges and how you got through it? Well, most of the fields that were available at the time were synthetic. And even now, some of our young players are having problems when they play on turf. It, it's a really cha real big challenge for them. But there are several turf fields that have been built around the country. All of it is private investment. And um, the kids are getting more and more opportunities to play. And they've started to get comfortable. And our, our senior players, they get to play on it a lot. And because of that, um, you know, they started to play better cricket. In our time, we played on synthetic and then we had to go and play on, on turf wickets, which for me, it, it was easier to do. But for people that don't play on turf, it's like it's a big giant in front of them. And, you know, it's scary. So that was one of the big challenges that would have faced is the, the wickets and that you're playing against international um, act, international players. But yet still, you guys, most of them would have been coming off the, 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 the synthetic. And in America, I'm here, they call it the Martin also. So when you go on the turf, it's definitely a different um, ball game. But despite all of those challenges, here we are. It's 2024 and the USA is in the T20 World Cup. Um, I've seen the team list. And what do you think about this current team that we have put together here in the U.S.? I think the squad is, is a very strong squad in relation to the talent that's available in the U.S. And, um, you know, I'm willing them to do well because I, I feel very much part of, of this team. Okay, Sir Lambert, we really want to thank you for your views in terms of the U.S. cricket and West Indies cricket and a whole which you have started out your career back there in the West Indies, you know, and yet you have decided to take it up, your experience, your knowledge of the game, you have decided to help to build the USA, and we have seen where your work is actually paid off because the US is now in T20 World Cup. It's history being made here in the US. History is going to be continually being made with this current US team. You know, in the final round of um, Sir Lambert, is there anything else you would want to say, anything else you'd want to add that could better this US team? Um, Like I said, the squad is, is a very strong squad, and if they relax and play together, you know, work their plan, um, good things could happen. Well, that said, from the family from Biff TV, we just want to say thank you for taking the time out. We know we're on the run. All of us is busy. This is the USA, guys. As you see, Mr. Lambert, he's out there, you know, he's on his busy move. We managed to catch him. You know, he managed to pull over and that tell you how much he loved the sport. He, he was willing to pull over for us to get this interview. You know, similar, I'm on the run, I'm out here in the street, and we're making it happen. And we just want you to just continue to support whichever team you support, continue to support it. Cricket is a disciplined team. It's a disciplined game. 
It's something that we all love. And for the sports to continue to grow, it's going to take each and every one of us support. We just say, just continue to enjoy the game, enjoy this T20 World Cup. And we're happy to be able to bring it to you from the West Indies and also from here in the USA. Just continue to follow us on Beef TV, where we're going to bring you the best cricket coverage possible. And we'll be doing this from a day-to-day -day activity. We'll be going into the street, down the lane, in the corner, at the stadium. Wherever we're going to meet cricketers, we will be there. So, guys, thank you from the family of Beef TV. Have yourself a blessed day. Thank you, Sir Lambert. Okay, thank you. Bye.